Good day everyone! I am here to discuss to you the chapter 8 of the readings in Philippine history, which is the preparation for the Philippine Commonwealth. But before that, let us know what we will learn today. Firstly, the Cooper Act, or which we call the Philippine Organic Act of 1902, the Jones Law, the Harry Hoss Cutting Law, the Tidings McDuffie Law. We will also learn about the 1935 Philippine election for the Commonwealth Government and we have here the every parties during that election. Firstly, the Nationalist Party, second one, the National Socialist Party, and the third one, the Republican Party, and we also have an independent candidate. And we will also see the results of the presidential election. In relation to the plan of President William McKinley, he established two commissions, the Sherman Commission and the Taft Commission, as preparation for the Philippine Commonwealth, an American-sponsored government. The Cooper Act or the Philippine Organic Act of 1902 Congressman Henry A. Cooper authored the Philippine Organic Act of 1902. The approval of the act concurred with the official end of the Philippine-American War, and it is also known as the Philippine Bill of 1902. The Philippine Organic Act provided for the creation of an elected Philippine Assembly after the following conditions were met. Firstly, the cessation of the existing insurrection in the Philippine Islands. Second one, completion and publication of a census. Third one, two years of continued peace and recognition of the authority of the United States of America after the publication of the census. After the meeting of the assembly, legislative power shall then be vested in a bicameral legislature composed of the Philippine Commission as the upper house and the Philippine Assembly as the lower house. Supervision of the islands was assigned to the War Department's Bureau of Insular Affairs. The first census in the Philippines was in 1591, during the Spanish time. It was based on the tributes collected and generated about 666,712 people in the islands. In the year 1799, Filipino population was estimated 1,502,574. However, the first official census in the Philippines was carried out by the Spanish government, pursuant to a royal decree calling for the counting of persons living as of the midnight of December 31, 1877. A count of 6,984,727 has been recorded. On the other hand, the first census conducted by the U.S. military forces took place in 1903 to fulfill Public Act 467, which was approved by the United States Philippine Commission on October 6, 1902, a total of 7,635,426 Filipinos were recorded as inhabitants of the Philippines. The Jones Law Congressman William Jones authored the bill which replaced the Philippine Organic Act of 1902. The Jones Law, is also known as the Philippine Autonomy Act of 1916, was another organic act passed by the United States Congress. The said law acted as a constitution of the Philippines from its enactment until the Tidings McDuffie Act was passed in 1934. The Jones Law created the first fully elected Philippine legislature. The law was enacted by the United States Congress for a formal commitment of the United the Philippines. The Jones Law was a framework for a more autonomous government with certain privileges reserved to the United States to protect its sovereign rights and interests in preparation for the grant of independence by the United States. The law also changed the Philippine legislature into the Philippines' first fully elected body and therefore made it more autonomous of the U.S. government. Elections were held on October 3, 1916 to the newly created Philippine Senate. Elections to the Philippine Assembly had already been held on June 6, 1916 and those elected automatically became members of the House of Representatives. The Harry Huss Cutting Law 
The Harry Hess Cutting Act was enacted on January 17, 1933. It was the first U.S. law passed that set a process and a date for the Philippines to gain independence from the United States. This law was the result of the Ostrocks mission led by Sergio Osmeña and Manuel Rojas. The law stated the following. First, America will give the Philippine independence after 10 years. Second one, they will establish several military and naval bases for the United States. And the third one, there will be impositions of tariffs and quotas on Philippine imports. The Harry Huss Cutting Act was authored by South Carolina Representative Butler Harry, Missouri Senator Harry Bartow House, and New Mexico Senator Bronson M. Cutting. It was passed by the United States Congress in December 1932, but was vetoed by U.S. President Herbert Hoover. Congress overrode the veto on January 17, 1933. The Philippine Senate was required to ratify the law, with leaders such like Manuel L. Quezon opposing the bill the Philippine Senate rejected the bill. The Resident Commissioners Benito Legarda and Pablo Ocampo were the first two Filipino resident commissioners sent to Washington. Other Filipinos who occupied this position included Manuel Quezon, Jaime de Vera, Teodoro Yanco, Isaro Gabaldon, and Camilo Osayas. The Tidings Macdafi Law the Tidings Macduffy Act, officially the Philippine Independence Act, was enacted on March 24, 1934, authored by the two members of Democrats, Senator Millard E. Tidings of Maryland and Representative John Macduffy of Alabama, and signed into law by President Franklin D. Roosevelt. The Act mandated the following. First, U.S. recognition of independence of the Philippine Islands as a separate and self-governing nation after a 10-year transition period. Second, the Act allowed the U.S. to maintain military forces in the Philippines and to call all military forces of the Philippine government into U.S. military service. Third, the Act empowered the U.S. President within two years following independence to negotiate matters relating to U.S. naval reservations and fueling stations of in the Philippine Islands. Fourth, the Act reclassified all Filipinos, including those who were living in the United States, as aliens for the purposes of immigration to America. A quota of 50 immigrants per year was established. Fifth, before this Act, Filipinos were classified as United States nationals, but not United States citizens, and while they were allowed to migrate relatively freely, they were denied naturalization rights within the U.S. unless they were citizens by birth in the mainland America. Senate President Manuel L. Quezon headed the Philippine Independence Mission to Washington, D.C. in 1934 after the Ostrocks Mission and successfully lobbied in the U.S. Congress and secured the passage of law. In 1935, as the result of Tidings Macduffy Law, the 1935 Constitution of the Philippines was drafted and became law establishing the Commonwealth of the Philippines with an elected executive, the President of the Philippines. To fulfill the mandate of Tidings Macduffy Law, a Philippine general election was the first general election of the Commonwealth of the Philippines in 1935. This was also the first direct election of the President of the Philippines and Vice President of the Philippines. Positions created in accordance by the 1935 Constitution. Moreover, members of the National Assembly of the Philippines, which replaced the Philippine Legislature, were elected. And these are the following parties during that election. The Nationalista Party The Nationalista Party had a dilemma between their two candidates as to who can be their party standard bearer for the presidency and for vice presidency. Both had the intention to run as president. A party convention was made for official selection for Manuel L. Quezon, the Senate President from Tayabas, and Sergio Osmeña, the Senate Pro Tempore from Cebu. On June 15, 1935, the Nationalista Party concluded 
and named Manuel Oquezon as their candidate for presidency and Sergio Osmeña for the vice presidency, and Ospeña accepted his party decision. The National Socialist Party Prior to the incoming election, General Emilio Aguinaldo founded the National Socialist Party in 1934. He announced his candidacy for president on June 2, 1935 with his running mate Raimundo Melisa. Mr. Melisa was a former governor of Iloilo. Their candidacy was also supported by the organization Veteranos de la Revolución, formed during the administration of Governor General Leonard Wood by remaining Filipino veterans of the Philippine Revolution and the Philippine-American War. I do not have any political party behind me. My party is composed of the humble sons of the people, fluttered before elections and forgotten after triumph. What more could I ask for? That's his acceptance speech of General Emilio Aguinaldo during the 1935 of June. The Republican Party In June 19, 1935, Bishop Gregorio Aglipay announced his candidacy for the presidency of the Philippines. He revived the Republican Party only for his intention to run for the 1935 election. His political party was organized since 1904 but collapsed in 1907. His running mate was Roberto Nabong from Partido Comunista ng Pilipinas. I would consider myself unworthy of having been born a Filipino if my personal interest and the tie of friendship should prevent me from listening to the insistent popular clamor to vindicate with the powers of the highest office and constitutional liberties so arbitrarily trampled down by an abusive regime and to cut the extravagant tentacles of the bureaucratic octopus that is sucking our public life. That is the speech of Bishop Aligpay. Independent Candidate Pascual B. Iracuyal a mechanic in profession, was a Filipino weird and aspirant for the Philippine presidency. According to some historians, there were questions as to Raculia's mental stability. Among his promises include that should be if he be elected to the presidency, he will construct roads out of plastic to prevent their further deterioration. He filed his candidacy on the 1935 election. On the 1953 election, he invited Manila Mayor Asenio Lacson as his running mate until 1986 to the Marcos Aquino snap election, but he was disqualified in 1986 and was declared a nuisance candidate. The Results of the Presidential Election This is the summary of the September 16, 1935 Philippine presidential election results. Manuel O. Quezon garnered 695,332 votes with a percentage of 67.99. Emilio Aguinaldo garnered 179,349 votes with a percentage of 17.54. Gregorio Aglipay He garnered 148,010 votes with a percentage of 14.47 and Pascual Racuyal garnered 158 votes with a percentage of 0. For the valid votes, we have 1,021,445 with a percentage of 98.89. For the votes cast, 1,022,547 with a percentage of 63.91. And the registered voters we have is 1,600,000 with a percentage of 100%. And this is the summary of the September 16, 1935 Philippine Vice Presidential Election Results. Sergio Osmeña garnered 812,352 votes with a percentage of 86.93. Raimundo Melisa garnered 70,899 votes with a percentage of 7.59. And Norberto Nabong garnered 51,443 votes with a percentage of 5.50. And that's all for our discussion for the preparation for the Philippine Commonwealth. Thank you and goodbye.